Hello everyone and happy Pi Day. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to look at VoIP phones again, but we're going to explore a feature called Auto Answer. Now Auto Answer is a feature in the phone and it gives the phone the capability to be able to answer a phone call all on its own through no interaction with the user whatsoever. The first time we saw this is with a fax machine. Everyone remembers a fax machine. Hold on, I'll remind you. It's a fantastic sound. It's like a nerd uh, mating call. The way Auto Answer helped the fax machine is you could set the fax to answer incoming faxes automatically. No one had to get up to answer the phone or anything in order to accept the fax. The product just came right in through the line and printed out for you and there was no problems. However, that feature was migrated over to telephones themselves, which could be helpful in certain situations. For instance, uh, as I read online, a nursing station, if you have a nurse who's working really hard on something and the phone rings, you wouldn't want her to stop to answer that phone call or a surgeon in uh, surgery or anything like that. There's all sorts of uh, different convenient things that Auto Answer can uh, help you out with. However, one of the bad things about Auto Answer is that you've essentially put in a dial a bug anywhere you have Auto Answer activated. This is a big enough vulnerability that in the US, the National Institute of Standards and Technology uh, found out about it and actually published it in a paper mentioning the dangers of enabling Auto Answer on a PBX. Uh, you can find uh, that report uh, here somewhere. I'll also put links to other articles that talk about the inherent dangers of Auto Answer. So today I'm going to show you three different ways Auto Answer could be used in order to uh, make your system more vulnerable. The first is going to be a setting in the PBX and there's a lot of moving parts to this type of attack so um, it really would be a very specific uh, angle. Uh, another one would be Auto Answer in the phone and then thirdly we're going to look at Auto Answer in the phone but maybe under a separate account in the phone and we'll talk about that in a moment. So first, let's look at auto answer on the PBX and setting that up. So something to keep in mind when we're going over these three different types of auto answer setups is that these are all legitimate uh, features that people use every day to accomplish their work. So these aren't just vulnerabilities outright. It's how you've got it set up, how you're mitigating it, how you're looking at the security side of it. The first thing we're going to do, this is free PBX. It's a, a PBX you can download and install yourself and play around with. Uh, kind of like what I've done. And what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to look at the phone extensions. So if I come over here to applications and go to extensions, it brings up a list over here on the right hand side of all the phones that I have programmed into the PBX and you'll see there's, uh, I'm a bit of a Doctor Who fan. We're going to go to uh, extension 1002, the master. And one of the things that we're going to enable here is uh, a feature that is called internal auto answer. Now what internal auto answer does is it allows someone else that is associated with the PBX like another telephone device to be able to call this telephone device and when uh, that other phone calls this telephone device then this telephone device will answer automatically. However, the other phone that calls must be within the internal network of this PBX. So um, I'm going to enable this but uh, in order to make this all work right, I can't just enable it here. I've got to do a couple of other things. So first I'll enable that. I need to come down here to submit, to submit this, hit apply configuration to uh, save this to the PBX. And then I need to go to the phone itself. So what it is, is this is uh, the login page for the actual phone instrument. I'm gonna log into the phone remotely. I'm gonna go to accounts and go to call settings. And what I need to activate is this allow auto answer by call info. So what's going to happen is the PBX is going to generate a, a phone call. That phone call is then going to go to this phone. And if auto answer is enabled on the PBX, by clicking yes here, it will also allow the telephone uh, to auto answer. If I click no, what's going to happen is the telephone will ignore the command from the PBX and it won't auto answer. If I click yes, uh, because it says it's going to auto answer if there's call info that says it should auto answer, then the phone's going to auto answer as well. So we're going to hit save and apply, and now I've saved that to the phone. There's one more step that we have to do, and we have to do this on the actual phone itself. So the last part that we need to do is we need to enable the internal auto answer intercom function on uh, this phone here. So uh, we'll put on speakerphone and do that. It's star five four. Intercom. Enable. And with that, the auto answer should work. So here we go, we'll give it a try. So this is an internal uh, phone. It is on the same PBX as this one at the moment. And so we'll dial this in. So 
Uh, we've got dial tone and this would be 1002. I'm going to mute this when it comes on. Alright, and there we go. Uh, right now, if you were listening to this handset, what you could do is you would hear uh, the audio in the room from this. I hit mute so there wouldn't be a feedback uh, loop, but I'll take it off so everyone can see that. Oh, yep. yep. Working really good. So, the interesting thing about this type of feature or vulnerability is that when I typed in star 54 on extension 1002 over here, and activated the feature, if I would have put in star 54 and then this phone's extension, which is 1001, then what would have happened is that this phone would have been the only phone that could have called 1002 uh, in order to activate or, or cause the auto answer functionality. As long as I press star 54, anyone in the network can call this and it'll auto answer. For an attacker, that might be pr problematic because if anybody can call this phone, then that means this guy will never ever get a phone call where the phone rings, and that might be a bit suspicious. So the advantage of this for the bad guy is that it can be a rather targeted approach. The disadvantage is that you know I had to access the PBX, I had to access the phone, I had to access the phone's web page. Also, I don't know if you've heard it, but you could rewind this video. Whenever extension 1001 calls 1002 and 1002 auto answers, 1002 makes a really loud beeping noise. So you kind of know if you're in the same office or you're in the same room with this thing, uh, when someone dials it and the auto answers, you're going to hear right away a big beeping noise and you're going to see a lot of lights flash up on the screen. So how would you counter this? Well, make sure you lock down your PBX really well. If you can't activate the feature, then this particular type of auto answer scheme just won't work. So the second thing we're going to look at is a scenario where auto answer is just inherent in the phone itself. So I went ahead and I reset everything uh, on the PBX and on the phone as it was normally. So the auto answer is not enabled on anything at the moment. So what I'm going to show you this time is one of the simpler auto answer setups. Uh, all I'm doing is I'm going to go into the phone's web page. So remember, this is the web server that's running on the actual phone itself. Uh, you can see that right now I've got account one set up to 1001. All other accounts are disabled. What we're going to do is we're going to go into account one. We're going to go to call settings and I'm going to scroll down. And what we have is just a regular uh, you know, setting called auto answer and it says if set you yes the phone will automatically turn on the speakerphone to answer incoming calls for a short uh, after a short reminder beep so I'm going to click yes here we're going to hit save and apply and I am going to show you what that looks like at the phone itself so here we are back at the phone again extension 1002 so I am going to dial it up and we'll see what happens I'm going to dial 1002 and there we are it went right to auto answer. Now this time uh, the beep uh, that comes on uh, when an auto answer is very low. It's not loud at all. It's very quiet. And so uh, another thing about this particular type of setup is it doesn't matter what phone calls this, whether it's an internal phone like this one or whether it's the phone calling from the PSTN into the phone system, this will auto answer right away. So the one thing that a security person has going for them though is that if this phone is set to auto answer like that, then every phone call will auto answer, which means the user of this phone would never hear the phone ring. And two, all of their friends would be telling them, every time I call your phone, I can hear you talking or typing. The danger of this type of setup is that someone might have set one of these phones in a conference room. If an attacker were to call the phone and no one ever paid attention to that phone, then he would essentially have a way he could listen to any sort of meeting or conversation that might take place in that conference room. Now to counter that, a lot of conference rooms have phones and have auto answer enabled on them so that the participants when they're having a meeting don't have to stop the meeting to answer each phone call for someone who might be trying to dial in and just listen to the meeting legitimately. So the last setup I'm going to show you is auto answer can be enabled on any account on a VoIP phone. Now what do I mean by that? There's four buttons up here. Each one of these buttons can be set up to be a different extension on this phone. So the first button up here is for extension 1002, just like we had. Um, what I've done also is I've set up a second extension down here, and I called it 3001, but I could potentially fill up every one of these with a different extension. Now that's not uncommon. A lot of your office phones have uh, buttons on the side of the phone that when you press them, it gives you dial tone, whether you press the first one, the second one, the third one, or even the fourth one. 
a lot of people though don't use some of those other buttons. I know uh, with office phones I've had in the past, there were three or four extensions on it. I rarely ever used them. I, I never used them. I always would just go with the primary extension. And however, what we're going to do now is we're going to program one of these extensions to auto answer. So the main extension, when people call it, will continue the ring, just normal. The only time the phone will auto answer is when I call one of these rarely used extensions in my scenario. I'm back at the phone's web page, and what we're looking at now is the accounts that are active. Account one is active, and you can see I've set up account two, but it's not active at the moment. Uh, account two is just an extension on the PBX that wasn't being used. Uh, if this was a real scenario, it might be an extension in an office or a cubicle uh, that's not at use at the moment. Uh, so what we've done is we've assumed that the attacker has taken over that extension and uh, has found the authorization to uh, sync up with the PBX. So uh, I have that here. All I need to do now is just to activate it because I've already got it programmed into the phone. It can be programmed into the phone in this web page itself. I'm just going to go up here to accounts, go to account 2, go to general settings, and uh, activate the account. So the account's been successfully activated. Now all we need to do is go to account 2, go to call settings, and turn on auto answer for just that account, not no other account on the phone. Now that that's taken care of, let's see how it works. Okay, so here's the interesting part about uh, this particular uh, type of setup. First what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this phone uh, in just a normal manner. So 1001, I'm going to call uh, 1002. So what should happen is it just rings normally. All right, we just have a normal phone call. It'll continue to ring until at such time as someone answers it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial the secondary extension on the phone. So pick this up again. The secondary extension, I set the extension 3001. So 3001, we'll hit that. And what's going to happen? Auto answer. Ah! So the advantage of this uh, scenario is pretty obvious for the bad guy. Um, you will still be able to call the phone normally. But at any time, I, uh, as a bad guy, can pick up the extension, dial the secondary extension, and get that auto answer type of capability. So obviously there's some stuff that an attacker would have to uh, somehow know. Uh, for instance, if someone's in their office and their phone is right in front of them, and all of a sudden a big red light comes on and it says off hook on the screen, then uh, you kind of know that something's up, something's going weird. Um, however, once again, we'll talk about that scenario where you have some kind of conference room or you have a phone in an office that no one really pays attention to, or a phone in an empty cubicle, uh, for that matter, uh, this becomes an issue. So to wrap things up, AutoAnswer is not the big bad boogeyman. AutoAnswer is a feature uh, that has a purpose and has a useful purpose. Uh, the thing that you want to know as a security professional is that you are aware that these features exist. There could be a perfectly legitimate reason for having this phone on AutoAnswer. Uh, but you need to be aware of it. You need to be aware of the situations where AutoAnswer can be a good thing. So in that scenario where you have a phone on the table in a conference room and AutoAnswer is enabled, it's a great thing if you're having conference call meetings. However, if someone goes in there for a private meeting and you have someone from the outside dialing in uh, to that phone, and they overhear that conversation, is that something that you're willing to risk? Um, is there a way so that you can deactivate that feature on that phone uh, whenever you want a private meeting? So these are all things that you kind of you need to think about. Make sure you know uh, the settings for the phones that are in your areas. Make sure that you understand the features that are on the PBX. But I like thank you for uh, watching this video. And if this has been helpful to you, please like, share it, or comment uh, wherever you're seeing this. And uh, thank you so much. Goodbye.